Thank you. Thank you to the organizers for having me here for this important workshop. Um, I think my talk follows on nicely from the previous talks. Okay, so I'm going to describe African American engagement in commercial genetic ancestry testing and discuss the selling of identity in the marketplace and potential implications for perceptions of ancestry and health. I want to start by talking about this remarkable book um, by Dr. Alondra Nelson, a sociologist. In The Social Life of DNA, Dr. Nelson describes her ethnographic research on African Americans engaging in genetic genealogy research. She calls them root seekers and begins her book by describing the popular miniseries Roots of 1977. Roots chronicled for the first time possibly on TV an enslaved black American family from the time um, that Kunta Kente was in Africa and the trials and tribulations in America. Slate Magazine reports that an average of 80 million people watched the first seven episodes and that 100 million watched the finale. Dr. Nelson explains how Roots sparked interest in genealogy research among African Americans. She explains that African Americans are asking deep, significant, and often painful questions about the past and turning to genetic ancestry testing for reconciliation projects. She describes those um, as DNA analyses that are used to help repair broken bonds of the past. And in her book, she talks about a lot of different uses. And we saw that there are about 4% of African Americans using 23andMe services, but there are many different ancestry services on the market. And uh, sometimes African Americans will use more than once at a time and compare the results. So in a way that was likely unimagined by those who engaged in the Human Genome Project, ancestry testing has become a point of entry for African Americans into the consumer genomics marketplace. Broadly speaking, genetic ancestry companies offer to tell consumers a story about their identity based on biology. I want to play an example advertisement, but I'm not sure how to hit the play button. And ancestry DNA board past the well, first my commercial. dad, he comes from the southern coast of Ireland. I think it's why we've been doing this forever. My dad has ancestors or African Bantu. $69. Okay. Give here. it to dad for Father's Day. Abigail, we can escape to the north. There's a place we can be together across the border. Will you leave with me? Uncover the lost chapters of your family history with Ancestry. Get started for free at Ancestry. So um, this ad was criticized heavily and is an example of everything that could possibly go wrong when marketing to underrepresented marginalized populations. Notably, Dr. Janina Jeff, she's the host of a podcast that's coming out in those genes where she uses black culture to teach concepts about genetics to youth. And um, she wrote in an article published in The Root, which is widely read by African Americans, the article was called 46 Chromosomes and a Mule, Falsely Romanticizing Our Complex Genetic Identities for Profit. She places the blame on a non non-diverse group of executives who came up with the ad and explains that the increased amount of African ancestry on the X chromosome in African Americans is evidence of system, systematic involuntary mating between European American men and African American women, contrary to the narrative proposed in the advertisement. Andre Kearns is a well-known genealogist in Washington, D.C. He has a blog on race, uh, culture, history, and genealogy. And he wrote, only the white male character speaks. The enslaved Abigail is portrayed as passive and mute, which unintentionally makes her story, uh, makes her the supporting actress in her own story. So there is concern about the erasure of history that could impede trust in consumer genomics companies. The companies themselves say that they can tell you who you are and how you're connected to populations around the world. 23andMe claims to trace your heritage through centuries. Ancestry.com uh, says that they'll provide precise 
geographic detail and clear-cut historical answers. But do consumers understand what we mean when we are using the word ancestry? And here's a figure that was published in May 2010. One of the authors is a panelist here today. Um, I have this figure here just to show that the individual people and this pedigree chart represent the complex diversity of recent ancestors. By encouraging consumers to see themselves as a percentage of allegedly distinct ethnic groups, commercial DNA tests may reinscribe notions of race and miscommunicate the complexity of ancestry. Further, the validity of these tests has come into question and is um, discussed in consumer reports. That's where this chart comes from, as well as various articles and in genealogy discussions. And this could impede trust in the technologies and possibly spill over into the clinical genetics testing realm. So this uh, figure illustrates that there's often a misalignment between what consumers are expecting and what companies themselves may be providing. A number of investigators at Consumer Reports sent in their DNA to different companies. Here are the results of the person who might hypothetically be Nicole. She has parents and grandparents who are African American and said that she hoped to learn more about different relatives and her connections to specific tribes in African regions. And what I wanted to highlight is the diversity in the results that um, she received about her ancestry from the different, from the different um, countries, from the different companies. Another major challenge is the inconsistent way we discuss ancestry. Examples are provided here. The continental, the term continental ancestry, which sort of stirs up all of the different ways, these are just examples and is one very broad term, obscures the great amount of genetic diversity on the African continent and the genetic diversity within African American populations. Another challenge is that the fields may not be maximizing the potential of consumer genomics to engage in discussions about ancestry. The marketing is about identity, and in many cases, social identity. Empirical research has shown that African Americans' racial um, self-identity is not impacted by genetic ancestry tests. There have been limited studies, but uh, Wendy Roth conducted 100 qualitative interviews on patients of white, black, Hispanic, Latino, Asian, and Native American backgrounds and developed the genetic options theory. When it came to African Americans, she said that consumers do not accept the test results as given, but choose selectively from the estimates, embracing or ignoring particular genetic ancestries according to mechanisms that she describes as their identity aspirations or preferences for the ethnic or racial identities that they seek to claim, and their social appraisals, their assessment of how others will accept their identity claims. So she describes a selective geneticization with consumers picking and choosing the genetic ancestries they want to embrace. Shim and colleagues found the same. They wrote, our participants drew a fairly firm distinction between their genetic ancestry information, which they saw as occasionally meaningful, but yet still just information. Um, and their self-identity was different and distinct. So the results had no effect on how they conceived of who they were or the communities and people with whom they affiliated. They might have felt different about the results or felt something. One um, respondent said that she felt the results were important, that they talked about a, a part of her history, but did not say who, mean much about who she is. Currently, because of the misinformation and the different results that are received, there's disagreement about whether ancestry testing of this sort can be useful. And there is discussion in medical cir cir um, circles about replacing race and ethnicity with ancestry. But this is how we are engaging African Americans on the topic of ancestry. So um, uh, Dr. Blell and Hunter say that ancestry tests misrepresent human genetic diversity and argue that these tests should not be used in the medical setting. On the contrary, other authors, and I've included uh, Dr. Royal and her colleagues and another colleague, uh, Dr. Fullerton, on the panel, 
Talk about the potential for consumers to share and discuss these results with providers. And I agree there, there could be some potential here, but we have to discuss how we're talking about ancestry. Um, this is a problem that's been documented in medical discussions. Uh, Dr. Ali Khan and her colleagues did a, um, a study where they looked at a number of different articles, about 170 articles that were published between 2008 and 2009. And they said that no article used race, ethnicity, or ancestry in a way that was defined or discussed the meaning of these concepts. And they argued that there's a clear imperative for highlighting the importance of consistent and comprehensive reporting on human populations. Pope Joy and, her, and colleagues in 2018 examined clinical laboratory results. They analyzed genetic test requisition forms from 10 clinical laboratories and found that no, ten, no two clinical laboratories provided the same descriptive categories to designate a group or population on their requisition forms. So this is a problem in the commercial sphere where we are engaging people from underrepresented minority populations. And it's a problem in the, in the medical sphere as well, when we, especially when we look at how biomedical research is conducted. And um, a number of people in recent years, I have a few articles here from 2018 as well as the um, article uh, from 2010, that make the argument that we have to begin to rethink how we talk about and report ancestry. So in conclusion, as the cost of sequencing declines, how can we improve genetic and genomic literacy, particularly among the populations that we increasingly want to engage? Are we missing important opportunities? Opportunities for clear and concise language related to race, ethnicity, and ancestry opportunities for building trust related to genetic and genomic testing services, tools for patient and provider communication about ancestry and risk. Thank you.